If you've ever done any kind of video production or photography, you'll know that lighting is an essential part of the process. And it is definitely no secret that this is something I haven't always realized in making my videos. So obviously I wanted to fix this problem. So the first thing I did was watch a couple of videos on lighting tips and tricks. But the only thing I noticed was that these guys had these amazing lights. After figuring out the name, I searched them and found that they are super expensive. Like a brand new oscilloscope expensive. So naturally our second best option, like with everything, is to make our own. And that's what we're going to be doing in this week's project. So to do this, we'll need some LED strips and a power source. Since I might want to use mine outdoors for like outdoor shoots or bird watching or something, I'm going to add the option of plugging in lithium batteries, but this is definitely not necessary if you plan to use yours near plugs. So first things first, we need to find a power supply for LEDs. I'm going to be using about 3.5 meters of LED strips for my panel, and looking at the bag that the strips came in, it says I need about 4.8 watts per meter. But the stupid bag turned out to be a huge liar, and I'll talk more about that later. So doing some quick math to find the amount of amps per meter and then timesing that by 3.5 shows us we need a power supply that can deliver at least 12 volts at 1.4 amps. Luckily I managed to find an old power supply for a router which is rated at 12 volts and 1.5 amps, which is perfect for that fake rating that the bag gave us. Anyway, now we can stop placing our strips on the base. This can pretty much be done in any way, but I'm going to be using a relatively small amount of LEDs, so I'm going to try and path them as dense as possible. I'm also scoring the ends of my base and bending it inwards to try and focus the light just a bit more. Once you're happy with the configuration of your LEDs, you can peel off the sticky side and stick them to your base. To solder the strips together, we're going to connect the positive pad on the end of the strip to the positive pad on the start of the next strip, and the same with the negative. This is done with all the strips until they're all connected. Now to make sure we did everything correctly, we're going to connect our power supply to the start of our strips and give it a test. If everything works correctly, we can start finishing off our base. Now, before I mentioned that I wanted to have the option of plugging in an external battery so I could use the panel outdoors, but the lithium charger that I use charges the battery so slowly, it takes about like five hours to get my battery fully charged. So I've added the option of plugging in the wall adapter for when we want to use it indoors. So before we can start planning out our battery circuits, we need to wire a switch and a DC jack to the base of the panel which will allow us to swap between either plug power or the battery power. We do this by connecting the positive lead of the LED strip to the positive pin of the DC jack, and then the negative lead of the strip to the middle pin of our switch, and then we run another cable from the outer pin of the switch to the ground pin of the jack. If you're running the one parts, you can find these DC jacks pretty much anywhere. I salvaged the female side from an old router, and the two male sides came from some old power supplies. This is why you should never throw away old electronics, because they will come in handy one day. Now when testing this with the batteries, and you see this an overhead light, I found that the base would bend quite a lot under the weight of the batteries. So to stop this, we're going to add a few more layers of cardboard until it no longer bends. Next, we stick some velcro to our battery pack and to the back of the base. This will allow us to remove the battery when it's time for charging. We need to place it as close to the middle as possible to stop the base from being overbalanced. Once you've got it stuck on, we can start planning out our battery circuit. The first thing we need to do is connect the positive and negative lead of the battery to the positive and negative pad of the charging circuit labeled B plus and B negative. Next we connect the negative and the positive output of the pad to the negative and positive inputs of the boost converter. This is a boost converter. It basically takes a lower voltage and lets you boost it up to a high voltage within a certain range. It's able to do this very efficiently, which means it shouldn't heat up too much. Our boost converter is going to take the 3.7 volt output from the battery charging circuits and boost up to 12 volts which we can use to power our LEDs. Now getting back to our circuits, the last thing we need to do is connect the positive output from the boost converter to the positive input of the jack connector and then the negative to the negative. However when testing the three 18650 cells I ran into a huge problem. I would power on my LED panel with the batteries and they would turn on for about 20 or so seconds and then start to flicker and then ultimately turn off which was really super annoying because I had no idea what the problem was and therefore I could not fix it. I started investigating with my multimeter and found that the output pins of the lithium charger were no longer outputting 3.7 volts anymore. So I determined it was a problem with the charger. After researching the charger for a bit, I found that it's only meant to charge one 18650 cell, which means I'm going to have to downgrade from 3 to 1. Now, while researching, I also found that it shouldn't have a load acting on the output while it's being charged which means we can't power our boost converter while the battery is being charged. So now we can go back to our original circuit and modify it to work with these changes. 
First we'll change it from three 18650 cells to one. And lastly, we're gonna add a switch which will break the connection between the negative output of the battery charger and the negative input of the boost converter. So once these changes are made, we can see the battery does work. However, now I'm a bit worried that the current draw from the LED will be too much for the battery. So I hooked up to my power supply to see what the current draw was, and I was surprised it's only 0.8 amps, which is way less than we calculated earlier. This ties back to that bag lying to us. So what I figured must have happened was the shop I bought them from put my LED strips into an old bag for a different strip with a different rating. That does make a lot more sense because when I bought it, I noticed that the bag wasn't sealed. Anyway, now we can start building a case for our battery and circuitry and put some Velcro on it. After that's done, we'll give everything a final test. Now, during my testing, I found that my boost converter got a little bit hot, um, which seemed weird because I'd never had one of these get hot before, and they're supposed to be really efficient, which means less heat production. But after some research, I found that other people had experienced them getting pretty hot as well, so it was nothing to worry about. With that sorted out, the panel was pretty much done. Now, lastly, we need to add a mount, which will let us mount the LED panel on top of our camera. And then I just added a layer of black electrical tape to the edges to make it look nice. But this is definitely not necessary if you're not awful at cutting and gluing cardboard like me. So now that everything's done, let's take a look at the results. It can be clipped somewhere to provide light to a workstation using the wall plug. Or it can be mounted to the back of a camera using the battery as a video light. Or it can be mounted to an older camera to be used as a flash for cameras that don't have flash. Or it can be used as an everyday overpowered under focus flashlight. Now this panel definitely doesn't compare to the one I showed you earlier from Amazon, but it's still a fun and cheap solution for bad lighting. A detailed guide with the wiring diagram and all the parts lists will be found in the video description. Thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed the video check out my others or like and subscribe for more.